Hello. So in this video, we will be creating a random sample of some of the existing uh, zones in Kenya. In order to get started, we have to bring in those existing zones. So that's what we're going to we're going to do. There, back to there. This lives in a file geodatabase currently, so I'm under directory, open file GDB. I'm already navigated to it, but I'll just hop back in there. So we click it to so select folder. From there, when I click add, it should prompt us of all the feature classes that are inside of that file geodatabase. And we want to take the Kenya existing zones. So we'll add layer, and now that pops in. But in order to get an understanding of what we're actually looking at, I'm going to add a base map here. So I'm going to come up to web, quick map services, OSM, I'm just going to do OSM standard. And down here, I just want to change this to WGS 84. Alrighty, so we zoom out, we have Lake Victoria, and we see all of our existing zones inside of Kenya. If I zoom in, this is the area that we're going to be focused in on. But let's take a look at something first. So if I go ahead and select a layer or select a feature, what we see here is one of them was highlighted. So when I right click and go to open attribute table, we have 19 features here. And this is the one that is selected. So if I were to run random points in here, it would put however many points we say. So for example, let's say we're going to try to do a hundred random points. It will put a hundred points in each actual feature. And that's not what we want. So we're going to do some uh, manipulating of the data here to get it how we actually want it. So first and foremost, I am going to draw a box around it, around these features. So I now have a couple of these, right? If I right click, attribute table, and do show selected. Here are the ones that we have. So we have these seven. What I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to save the selected features. So we'll change that to a shape file. We'll make sure we save that here. Cool. I'm gonna call this um, selected Kenya existing. Cool. And I will set this to WGS84, like I changed down there. It's a little projected for us. Alrighty, so that's saved. If I turn these off, I notice the other ones went away. So I'm going to get rid of those, remove. But let's double check something. So we're still in the same predicament that if I click on one of these, they are coming up as individual. So we are going to run a dissolve to turn these all into one particular feature. So I'm gonna deselect. I'll come up to the processing, click toolbox. And then from here, I can search. And let's do dissolve. Alrighty. So I'm going to dissolve the selected ones. I'll leave this as a temporary file and I'll click run. Alrighty. So it says it was completed and finished up. I'll close. Return those off. I'm still seeing the ones I'm expecting, but now let's go ahead and do a selection. Notice all of them are highlighted. So these are going to be treated as one feature in particular. Alrighty. I'm going to get rid of this now. Just so again, we don't get confused. I'll deselect. Now that we have our zones of interest, we are going to run a tool that will create some random sampling points for us. So let's do random. We will do random points in a polygon. So the only layer that we have is dissolved. And if we notice here, number of points for each feature, that's where we're going to run into the issue where it would put a hundred points in each feature. And that's not necessarily what we want. We want a hundred points over this uh, zone of interest over these couple of zones. So we'll just set that to 100 and same thing. We'll just leave it as a temporary file and we run. Alrighty, hundred points and close it out. And this is what it looks like. We now have a hundred points in these areas of interest. So in order to move forward, we want to actually do some stuff with these points. So if we notice here, we have some random 
fields that don't really do much for us. They all look exactly the same for each value. And these came from that original polygon. What we want to do is get rid of them. So to do that, I'm going to start editing and I'll open that back up. And now we can delete fields. So I'm going to delete fields. I'm going to get rid of object ID, HA length and area. Go ahead and delete. They should be gone. Give that a save and I can turn off the edits. Alrighty. Now let's add a couple fields to here. So let's call this station ID. And we'll make this a text. This is the field that we're going to use to join in with our sampling points. So when eventually we go out into the field and take the actual points, this will be the ID that we use to link up the data. So let's call this a station ID. We'll make it output of a text. And in here we have to put an expression. So it's a string. So strings are dictated by putting a quotation mark. So we're going to do E B B B. I'm going to end the string and then I'm going to concatenate it. I'm going to add it together with this. So we're going to do two, two string. And basically I'm turning the ID into a string and we're concatenating it. So if we look here, this is the ID one, two, three, four. It goes all the way down to for the hundred points. What we want to do is just basically add EBB in front of it and give it some sort of identifier. And we notice down here, that is what it will look like. So if I go ahead and click, okay, we now get a new field called station ID with an ID going all the way down to 100. Right, so we have that, but now we need to know where to actually go for these points. So let's come into here and we'll do the same thing. We'll create an X point. Do a decimal and come down into here, geometry. And I need to now go find X. So the dollar sign X is a function and it basically is just going to take the X value from the let long. Go ahead. Then we have that and we'll repeat for the Y. I think change that to a number. Scroll down. Geometry. And Y. Alrighty, so now we have our X and our Y's for these points. So if I go ahead and save them, I can exit that and I can turn off the loading. Now, when I come in and oops, zoom too far, if I click on identify, I click on a point, we now see the station ID for that point. We see the X and we see the Y. Alrighty. So let's say that we did go out and we actually, uh, do not write them down. We did go out and we actually took samples at all of these. So we're going to have those inside of this Excel sheet. So we have 100 points. And if we notice here, we have a station ID that all of them are associated with. We have some depth and some other values. We are now going to bring these into QGIS. And we're going to do that by joining these points based off of this station ID. So. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and do join. We're gonna actually, before I can join it, we have to bring it into the map. So we'll go layers, add layer, and we want to bring in a CSV. Alright, here we go. Water quality parameters. Open that up. And when I click add, we should now see that over in here. Let's right click and open this up. And like you say here, we have our station ID and then we have all of our values. We are going to, let's open this. So we have that and let's see. Basically what we are going to do is link these values to one, one another. So where it says EBB1, it's gonna find EBB1 over here and then populate all those values into here. That's what the join is going to do. It's just going to link them together. So let's go ahead and we can do join attributes by field value. All right. We are going to take the points and we're going to use station ID. 
can use the water quality and the station ID. So it's going to link those up and add them together. So if we run, if we notice here, 100 were successful, zero were unjoined. If there's not a matching ID, you'll end up with some that don't join. Ours are perfect. So we now end up with this joined layer, which has all the points, the geometries and everything looks exactly the same. But now when I come in and identify one of them, right, what I see is all of the, whoop, on the wrong one. That's why I like to remove these when I'm done with them. So I don't run into that issue. So I'm gonna click on join layer, make sure I'm actually clicking it. Now, when I click identify, I will see all of the values associated with that point. So I went out in the field, took the samples, these are the values associated with that point in particular. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this a permanent layer. I'm going to save this as a shape file. Make sure I'm in the right spot. All right, we'll call this sample points with values. All right, so I can save that. So now this is a permanent layer. I can save this and share this out with anybody that I want. If people want to see what samples and what values were associated with it, as well as if I want, I can export it and I can save it as a CSV file. All right. So I know we were previously working in a CSV, CSV file. We can pretty much do the same thing. Sample points with values dot CSV. All right. So now this is just a table and I can open that up sample points with values. It's going to show that there's a lock because we're using it in this program, but we can open it as read only. So now this is a CSV file with the station IDs, the XY of where we took it, and then all the values associated with it. So we joined the original CSV up with the sampling, the random sample points that we generated inside of QGIS. All right.